Another one is tax gain harvesting. It's just the opposite. So now this is in when you're low tax brackets and when you're close to $40,000 taxable income for single, close to $80,000 for married, then when you sell a stock, a long-term stock capital gain, you actually pay zero tax. You may pay state tax, but you pay zero federal tax. Quick example. So let's say you're married, taxable income's $50,000. You can actually sell about $27,000 worth of gain to get to that $77,000 threshold. You'll pay zero federal tax. This is particularly useful if you need to rebalance or you need funds and you're afraid to sell them because you're going to pay tax. Well, guess what? You may not have to pay tax. Uh, in, in that situation. Yeah, you have to take a look at your tax bracket, right? Because look at taxable income, line 43 on your tax return. So if you're $80,000, if you're single or married, $40,000 roughly, there's zero capital gains rates here. So for those of you that are retired that are living off of your assets, really start taking a look at this because if you have gains, like Al said, you can sell up to these thresholds and pay zero tax. If you really like the security, sell it and buy it back because you're just increasing your overall tax tax basis. Now, this only really, we're talking about assets in this category here. So this is outside of a retirement account that only works for assets outside of a retirement account. So we call those like taxable assets. But I understand that a lot of your assets are sitting in this pool here, tax deferred. So that's your IRAs and 401ks, 403bs, TSPs, and so on and so forth. Very few people have this guy. That's the tax-free pool. That could be a Roth IRA, right? So what we look at is to try to get diversity. We all understand diversification, stocks, bonds, real estate, precious metals, but there's very little tax diversification going on in your overall situation. Because if all of my money is sitting in this account, every last dollar is going to be taxed at the highest of rates, ordinary income. But guess what? The tax code has changed. Those ordinary income rates are probably one of the lowest they've ever been in history. So it might make sense to take a little extra out of these accounts over the next couple of years just to pay the lower tax. Better yet, you might want to put them up here into a tax-free environment. Yes, you pay the tax going up here, but you have to look at what tax bracket are you in now? What do you project to be in the future? Does it make sense to have assets to forever grow tax-free? The answer is probably yes, because this is how tax rates work. They stair-step. So last year, we had a 10%, we had 15, we had 25, 28, 33, 35, and then this top one, 39.6. You get the gist. But this 15 turned to 12. This 25 turned to 22%. This 28% turned to 24. As you can see, these are huge tax savings that we can implement. So when you're looking at a... Hey, should I take money from this account and move it up here? The answer could be yes, because the tax rates have changed. They are a lot lower, so you're buying the tax on sale, and you're going to have those assets to forever grow tax-free. Now you have to start taking distributions from the overall account. I'm gonna start taking money from my tax deferred account, it's ordinary income. So then I fill up these lower brackets, right? I'm gonna fill up the 10%, I'll fill up the 12 or 15%, but I want more income, right? I want more cash flow. So what do I do? If I'm prepared, I'm gonna take it from this tax-free guy, pay zero tax. So the point is, is here. Now, I'm living up in these high tax brackets, but I'm paying very little in tax. Does this make any sense whatsoever? Absolutely it does, you love this stuff.